excited to have you on this webinar. Thank you for joining. My name is Lena Levine. And um, today, uh, what I would like to talk about is to how startup founders, how entrepreneurs can validate their product idea and get market traction in just three months. So, um, and before we jump in into the topic, um, I wanted to give you a quick background of, uh, you know, the reason why I'm doing this. Um, I have put together a series of the webinars with uh, my colleagues and other experts in the industry. And today I'm kicking off the series with my, uh, with my webinar. And the purpose of the series is to help entrepreneurs to avoid common mistakes that startup founders keep making over and over again. I've been in business for over uh, eight years and I've been in the industry, in the tech industry for over 15 years now and spoke with hundreds of startup founders. And just it's <laughs> it's it, it been really, um, you know, uh, really killing me to see entrepreneurs making the same mistakes that uh, lead them to wasting time and money and resources and keep rebuilding their products over and over again, investing, you know, does, you know, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars into the products and then keep redoing them, redoing them without seeing any results and wasting years of their time, you know, where they could be already successfully selling their product and then they still trying to figure out how to build it. Right. So, and that's where the idea for this series came to mind. And um, we put together the list of, uh, of uh, webinars that will cover process of building SaaS products, launching startups, scaling startups, making sales, finding clients. So how, pretty much how to take it from zero to launch. And uh, um, these are the uh, biweekly series that will be working, you know, walking entrepreneurs through that step-by-step -step process. So, and today we are kicking off uh, with a topic on, you know, for those entrepreneurs that uh, either just starting working on the idea and uh, don't have an MVP ready, or even if you're already working on MVP and looking to get it done correctly or looking for, you know, learn the right process, um, you know, this is a great topic for you to, um, you know, to, 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 to hear. So, and, uh, um, so let's, um, yeah, let's, let, let's jump in. So, uh, one, one story that I wanted to share with you today is a company that we worked with, uh, called Transparency Registry. Uh, it's a startup in a fintech niche, uh, the blockchain based startup. They've been building a very complex web application and uh, the problem that they ran to, ran into is that they were running out of cash the they didn't have a completed mvp because the focus the primary focus of the development was on the back end and the blockchain technology and they literally were running out of cash they had still had nothing to show to the investors because all the uh, development was on the back end and it's um you know if you're familiar with the terminology it's you know usually the logic behind the scenes so there's not much visuals to show to users or investors. So they needed help with raising money. And that's where we came into play. We helped them to put together uh, an interactive design prototype to present their product idea in a visual comprehensive way, way that uh, even investors that were not familiar with the uh, industry very well, well or the problem were able to easily understand what, uh, how the startup is solving problem. And they were able, so Transparency Registry was able to raise $1.2 million in seed round in nine months. And they were able to extend their project runway. They hired five more people to their team uh, and continued building the startup. So, and today I will uh, cover the process or how we help them to get that, uh, you know, traction, help them to, uh, validate their product idea and help them to, you know, secure investment with, um, you know, with an interactive prototype. So, and yeah, here's a quick screenshot of their uh, uh, crunch, crunch base account. So uh, a few, few fun facts that I wanted to share with you is um, th there is a, uh, and that's a market data provided by Nielsen Norman group. Um, uh, showing that on average companies that invest in the quality UX UI design uh, get 
uh, on average 135% ROI on the investment. And in general, better quality UX UI design and uh, thinking about it upfront helps companies to increase conversion rates, uh, improve and increase time spent on the platform, uh, meaning your users enjoy your exper you know, experience of the application, they don't bounce, they continue returning. Obviously, it in increases subsequently monthly recurring revenue, so more money in your pocket, increases user retention, and things like that. So in here, I have a link to the study if you want to read up more on that. So, uh, and uh, um, here's another data from the Peach book, uh, which is a, a source, uh, online source for entrepreneurs and start uh, startup founders and VCs. So uh, based on the report from 2020, um, uh, it showed that uh, VCs started shifting. Uh, so when, when VCs evaluate the companies and how they determine who they should invest in, their focus shifted from looking at um, comp uh, the team's pedigree and potential of the project, right? But the, the focus shifted into looking at how much, um, how much, uh, like what is the business model, path to profitability, how much homework have startup founders have put up front, uh, meaning have they validated the idea, have they gotten market traction, right? What is the, where's the proof that this is idea is going to take off? So this is, um, you know, the shift that's happening in the market and this is what uh, venture capital firms are looking uh, when they uh, invest in into the companies, which is uh, really great news for entrepreneurs because not everybody can, uh, you know, recruit the team for their project that's, you know, all-star entrepreneurs from Ivy League schools. But what all of us can do is to put in work, right? Do our homework, do the research, really put in its, you know, your time spent, uh, you, you, you invest in your time into the project to make sure that, you set up correctly from the start and uh, reducing the risk both for yourself, for the investors, as you continue investing into the product development, software development, and um, you know increasing your chances of growing your sales quickly once the product launches, because you are, you know, would be able to um, find the customers even before the. Uh, you complete your MVP. So, and this is what we're going to talk about in a little bit. So. And the process that we will cover today, who it is for, right? Who is it uh, works best for? So uh, it's perfect for non-technical startup founders who are looking to raise their first seed round, finally take a breath and get a good night's sleep, right? You want to finally, um, you know, take a break and focus on scaling your business. For people that already did their homework, put the elbow grease, and now looking how to put the idea and take the idea in front of the customers. Uh, if you have already tried potentially, you know, building a product that didn't work, so you suspect that there is a better way to validate your product market fit uh, before you invest tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars into web and mobile app development, right? Because the further you go into the software development process, the more expensive it becomes, right? So before you uh, invest your own money or you know your uh, you know friends and family money, uh, you want to be confident that um, that your idea will be um, you know scalable and you, you you know of course you want to succeed, right? So potentially you already in, you know invested into the product and in MVP and again it didn't get any traction. So now you're looking to go back to the step one and figure out what you did wrong. So this is um, you know uh, there will be a lot of um, helpful information for you. Also, if you hate wasting money, if you want to get it done correctly from the beginning, this is my personal mantra, right? If you want to do it right, do it. If you want to do something, do it right from the start. So. Uh, yeah, so if you're serious about your product idea and you want to do it right from the start, you're in the right place. And who this is, is not for. Uh, it's not for people that looking for a magic bullet of, you know, going, making millions of dollars with their product or, you know, uh, become an overnight success. Even though uh, it is a working process that's been tested by the market uh by you know many successful companies by us working with the clients it still takes time and effort to 
um, you know, to follow this process. So you still need to put in work. Otherwise, you're not going to get the results. So and the con core concept that we will be covering today is that the truth is you can validate your product idea in three months or less without investing time and money into developing an MVP, right? And um, just a quick, a quick clarification, MVP stands for minimal viable product, right? So it's a set of features, the minimal set of features that you can deliver to your customers that will help to, you know, showcase the value of your product uh, with a minimum uh, effort and investment from your side. So, so you can validate your product idea even before you develop an MVP. Uh, and if you um, if you have been, uh, you know, reading the Lean Startup model, or um, I would say the few years ago, maybe like five, 10 years ago, the huge trend was to ship something as quick as possible. And that's what, uh, you know, and by shipping, I mean, you know, building something real quick, just getting it out of the door and only, at that point, starting to validate your idea, which is, um, as the practice pr practice shows, is not the best uh, way to to launch the startups because that's again one of the reasons those companies kept redoing their products over and over again uh, because they didn't follow the order of the steps in the right um, sequence. So, and again, most entrepreneurs, uh, unfortunately, most entrepreneurs are not aware of this process because the market is flooded with information. If you're not living and breathing. Uh, entrepreneurships, building, uh, you know, startups and products. Um, it's hard to find the right approach to do things. And also it's hard to figure out the approach that offers the best balance between cost and quality. So um, before we jump in uh, into talking about the process, um, I, I, I wanted to share with you a little bit about myself, right? Why, uh, you know, why, 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 why should you trust me and uh, who am I um, and, uh, you know, why am I presenting to you today? So my name is Lena Levine. I'm the uh, founder and the CEO of Fercota, uh, a digital product agency um, uh, located in Miami. Uh, and uh, I have uh, moved to the US from Russia in 2014, started uh, in 2009, in, sorry, in 2009, and I started my business in 2014. And over the years, we have uh, worked with uh, national brands, uh, startups, banks, universities, you name it, learn the best practices from, from national level brands and projects like Shake Shack, Oral-B, um, other New York-based agencies, and um, we, uh, you know, over the last uh, several years in business, I, as I mentioned, I came across a ton of founders that got burned by uh, following wrong processes, trusting wrong companies and specialists. And uh, um, but, but we were able to help dozens and hundreds of companies to design better products and find uh, raise funding without building MVP and help. Uh, founders increase main KPIs uh, for the companies um, that they were focusing on. So um, uh, I also have been uh, been a speaker at a variety of the events. I gave a presentation at TEDx, uh, Youth at Buffalo, been featured in a different um, different um, publications, talking about entrepreneurship, startups, women uh, in a tech space, uh, and uh, Again, here are the few clients that we worked with over the years. So, uh, and uh, uh, today, the, the 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 blueprint method that we're going to cover, right, is how you can validate your uh, SaaS product idea in three months or less without building an MVP. So, the old way of presenting uh, or building and launching products uh, looks looks like this. So. Uh, entrepreneurs would start by identifying their uh, problem, idea, solution, and um, maybe you know defining a problem, doing a little bit of the customer research. A lot of times, not doing the customer research at all. I've seen startup founders just building products based on their own assumptions and keeping their ideas super secret because they thought people will steal it. And um, uh, you know, people would skip the uh, the the doing in depth research and jump into designing application, building an MVP, and only once the MVP is ready, they will start soliciting customer feedback, try to get sales, then pitch the investors, and then you know, 
raise one million dollars so what happens here if we don't get these three steps correctly and um by the time you know if we solicit customer feedback too late in the process what might happen here we risk into building we risk building something that customers do not want and i've seen it happening too many times especially when companies building complex products in the fintech space healthcare space um you know and you know really it applies to any niche and industry and what happens when companies launch the products that do not resonate with customers uh they have a terrible time closing sales because now they build something that doesn't resonate with customers and now they're trying to sell something or find the customers that fit within their solutions right so and if they can't get traction with sales they will have a miserable time pitching to the investors and even you know much harder time raising a million dollars so now they have to go back and uh figure out what step uh they uh you know went wrong so the new way in the process that we follow in uh, uh with our clients is really diving with customer research first and uh, focusing on uh, doing the market research, uh, talking uh, with uh, users to understand the problem that we're solving for them, right? Understanding the main questions such as, are we solving the problem that's urgent for them? Are we solving the problem that they're willing to pay for? Do customers have money to pay for the problem? Things like that, right? Um, because again, there are so many um, ways how it can go wrong if you're serving, for example, a market that doesn't have money to pay you they might have a problem but they have no money to pay you then you just you know wasting your time and you should focus you know focus your attention on a different market so uh once you figure out this step right then we do the design uh create a design prototype as the next step we get more customer feedback by presenting interactive design prototype and um uh, collecting the feedback, continue refining it to make sure that the product aligns with the customer expectations, maybe processes that they're already following. If it's a, uh, let's say you're building a B2B product. And then as a next step, you know, getting, you know, getting sales based on the, um, you know, interactive design prototype. So as you can see here, we don't even, we're not even building an MVP. We don't have an MVP anywhere in this process. So getting sales by continue leveraging interactive design prototype, pitching to the investors, raising $1.2 million, and as a next step, building an MVP. So the, the our goal is, you know, the, the name of the game is OPM, other people money, right? So we always want to, well, not always, but there is a benefit of, uh, you know, and less, less risk to the founders uh, leveraging investors' money versus investing your own money. So um, let's take a quick look at the, it, the, the, this process step by step and, um, uh, you know, how, how it works, right? So again, so as a step one, uh, validating, uh, doing the market research to validate the idea and get the problem solution, right? So as I mentioned, the old way was building products just based on the founder assumptions or their market knowledge. And it led to a uh, hard time finding the product market fit and um, finding it also, uh, without being you know, very specific, it was very tough to find the right problem to solve because again, based on the assumptions, it's hard to, um, you know, sometimes founders get lucky and they really uh, identify the right problem, but, uh, you know, a lot of times there is solving the problem that nobody, um, it's not a high priority problem. So uh, so the, the, the new way is to go heavy on the user research, flood your brain with customer data without writing one line of code, combine customer data with your own knowledge to find the right solution to the problem. As a new result, uh, it allows to uh, clearly understand target audience needs and expectations and create the design and product that resonates with customers and leads to higher sales. And um, uh, subsec uh, subsequently, you would spend less uh, time and money on the development and making changes down the, right, down the line and help you to close more sales down the road. So here are some examples of the user persona profiles. So 
uh, I also have a, a few questions here, but we can leave them to the end. This is more like a, a FAQ questions that we can take a look at uh, if we have some time left. So, <clears throat> uh, and uh, typically, yeah, for the user interviews, uh, you want to uh, inter talk to at least five to 10 people in each of your target user groups. So um, once you collect the data from your uh, from the user interviews, right? And for user interviews, you can leverage your personal network. You can even reach out to people on LinkedIn and um, or in different uh, you know LinkedIn groups, your network, uh, Slack channels, and um, schedule those interviews. And uh, you can you know compensate people for their time by you know maybe offering them you know gift card. Some people just you know, can do it because they, uh, you know, uh, you know, want to help out. Some another option you can do is to offer them like a uh, put together your uh, findings and report and say after we conduct the study, we will share the findings in the report format with you because some people also value um, getting the you know, the, the market report as well. So that can be another way to incentivize people. So once you uh, interview the potential customers, um, you want to take that knowledge and turn your, start working on the design of your product and create an interactive design prototype. And then in the past, the old way of people, uh, whenever they present their product idea to their potential customers, they might use um, something like a um, you know PowerPoint presentation. Maybe they're not even presenting anything. They just you know explaining the idea on the you know the, the, the napkin sketch. And the challenge with that is that if you're not um, well, first of all, we're all visual creatures, right? And the idea that you might have in your head, the vision that you might have in your head, you might envision it in one way, but the person who you pitch an idea to might envision it differently. And even though they, they are telling you, yes, they will have the idea, they might be thinking about completely different solution. And now you're in trouble because they said they liked something, but you both of you thought about two different things, right? So that's why it's very important to, when you explain in your idea to potential customers is to Present it in the clear visual format that reduces uh, the, the amount of mis miscommunication to, to zero. And the best way to do it is by creating interactive design prototype that looks and acts like a finished uh, product. But the, the difference is that it's, it, it's a design file. So what interactive design prototype is, it's just a bunch of design files interconnected together with you know buttons uh, having different states as you you know hover like here's an example i have a little uh, gif image right as we hover on something the state of elements changes but really it's just a different design overlays design uh, files connected with each other so even though it might look like a finished functional product in reality, it is just a clickable design prototype. But when you are presenting the design prototype to potential customers on a Zoom or in front of them in person, right? Or to the investors, an educated user will not be able to tell the difference between uh, you know, finished product and uh, just the design prototype. And you, you know, you don't even have to specify to them that, you know, that's what they're looking for. You can just say, hey, this is, you know, um, you know, th th this is what we're working on. And um, you, you know, you, 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 you can skip the details, right? <laughs> so, and the, what uh, the benefits of this step in leveraging interactive designs prototypes is high quality of MVP. MVP that resonates with the target audience. Um, also, faster and cheaper. It allows you to, to make changes based on customer feedback faster and cheaper. So as I mentioned earlier, the further we go in this process, uh, in the product development pro process, the more expensive it becomes to make changes. So on the idea phase, right, we can just discuss it and we can change things on the fly. In a design prototype, right now we have to change the file, you know, the design files, make the edits, but it's still pretty quick. But then once you go into the software development phase, it, the cost of making changes can go up five to ten times compared to the design phase. So that's another reason why you want to 
refine, uh, you know, add those final touches, refine your idea during the design phase because it will save you a ton of time and money down the line. So even though you have to invest a little bit more upfront, but it, it will save you um, more money in the end. So step three, once you put together interactive design prototype, you want to go back to the same users that you spoke in the beginning and continue gathering the customer feedback now with a visual aid that you have in front of them, right? So during the initial phase, we the goal was just to understand the pain points. And now at this step, our goal is to get the feedback, feedback about the product that you designed based on a feedback and their, uh, you know, input. So, and again, originally the how startup founders were presenting the ideas were using PowerPoint presentation, draft sketches, or even worse, waiting until the MVP is ready to solicit customer feedback. Please don't do it. Uh, this is a terrible, terrible mistake. You're wasting your time and money. So, and the outcome of that was, you know, frustrating process low user buying rate since not all users could visualize the idea, um, lack of actionable feedback. Um, again, product that <laughs> it resulted in products that didn't match the customer, customer needs or expectations, wasted time and budget on rebuilding product down the road um, and uh, spending more uh, money on fixing something during the development phase. So, and with the interactive design product, prototype, and here's, uh, by the way, uh, what the prototype looks behind the scenes. It's, uh, you know, different files interconnected. Um, with, with the design prototype, you can demonstrate the idea to the users and get the clear feedback about what features they like, don't like, maybe missing from MVP even. Um, you can also go heavy on the user research and again, have more data come in from your customers based on their feedback. And now, uh, you know, continue refining and finding the right uh, solution to the problem. And one thing that I also want to mention, when you are picking users for user interviews, um, it's important uh, to be strategic because the people that you want to interview, um, ideally, they should be your potential buyers. And the people that you want to talk to should be people that already try to solve the problem in the past. Um, you know, the, the problem that you're trying to solve, like ideally you want to talk to people that also tried to solve it but failed. Uh, maybe they try to you know, create the solution using or like leveraging existing tools on the market, right? Maybe they try to connect a bunch of Google spreadsheets using Zapier tools with, I don't know, Slack bots and WordPress website, but it failed because it was too clunky and, you know, they hated it or they didn't have enough resources in house to put together, right? Or maybe they had resources in house and tried to build it internally, but they didn't have enough knowledge how to do it. So it's also failed, right? So if you can connect with those people that understand that they have a problem, try to solve that problem, they will be your ideal customers that you can close the, the fastest because uh, now as you're also taking them through this process of getting their feedback, now they become an invested in your solution. Now they become a part of that solution, right? You're building a solution. So by the time you are, you have your product launch, those people will be first in line to hand you money and become your uh, potential customers. So when it comes to interviewing people, it's very important um, to be strategic about it. So, and in terms of user testing sessions, uh, when you gather feedback about your interactive design prototype, you the fastest way to do it is via Zoom call and doing a screen share. Um, and what you can do, you can share the interactive design prototype with your, you know, with the person you're interviewing. And um, uh, usually for design prototypes, we use a design tool called Figma. Uh, it's very popular. Um, and uh, um, so the you can send them the link to the prototype. And as they navigate the design prototype, right, you can give users simple tasks saying, hey, can you maybe go and how would you create an account here? How would you complete this task? Can you take a look at this page and just, you know, let me know what you, what you see on this page and ask them to talk it out loud so you can understand what their thought process is and also um, observe how they navigate in the page. And at the same time, just, you know, 
ask them the question and shut up. Don't say anything. Don't uh, influence the, uh, um, <laughs> you, you know, the, the, the decision-making process because you just want to observe and see how, uh, and, you know, uh, first-time user, how they navigate the system because that will be, that, that's where you will build, you would be able to see any issues or uh, maybe friction areas that users find confusing, right? And then they might also provide you with additional feedback um, about what they would like to, to see in the tool. So, and uh, yeah, hopefully you don't have to watch them in, in extreme agony if they, uh, as they struggle to figure it out. So if you, you know, if you designed it correctly uh, and, you know, if you're working with a great design team, it should be, uh, everything should be pretty intuitive and pretty smooth for the users. So, um, and so once you conduct those user testing sessions, you want to go back to the designer or, you know, if you're doing it yourself and refine the design prototype based on the feedback. And um, um, again, the old way, the, the how startups were doing it in the past is making changes directly in the MVP after they already fully developed it. And as I mentioned it, right, that increases your expenses by five, 10 times. Um, and it also takes longer time to, to make changes in, uh, you know, in, in the source code. So now if we're making those changes and refinements in the design prototype, so it's much, you can make the changes, you know, after each, um, interview, uh, you, at the end, you get a high, higher quality of MVP, um, reducing costs of making, uh, changes and happier customers and investors. Um, so, and, uh, uh, let's see. So yeah, once you, you know, once you feel like you're comfortable with your design prototype and you feel like it's in a place where you want it to be, your next step is to go and get pre-sales. So this is where the, you know, the, the, the secret sauce of this process, right? Again, you want to start selling before you build something. And again, the old way is start selling only after MVP was developed. So now you might spend six to 12 months building an MVP and you don't even know if it's resonating with your target audience or not, right? And now you're trying to sell it and people are like, what is this? I didn't, you know, that's not what I expected. So, and uh, it resulted in, uh, less cash in the bank, uh, customers that were not willing to pay for the product and founders had to go back to the drawing board. Um, if you wait too long to start selling, your competitors might beat you to it, which is, um, you know, happens quite often, especially if you're in a uh, very fast paced uh, market. For example, like that's what's happening in the uh, Web3 space right now, right? There are a lot of startups uh, building products and launching very quickly. And um, the investors have reduce as uh, originally you had to um you know in the startup world you had to submit five years of financial projections when you're raising money right so now invest investors asking for you know only two years of projections and asking what you can deliver in two years because you know five years in crypto space is an eternity right so things are moving very very quickly so um and uh yeah also another challenge that you should keep in mind if your sales cycle or if you're building a product that has a long sales cycle for example you're selling to banks right the sales cycle might be a year so you're losing available time and your startup can run out of cash but if you are start selling by leveraging interactive design prototype you could be selling as quickly as um i would say uh, actually not weeks but two two three months um and um that, uh, you know, while you're building your MVP, your sales process already started, right? So by the time you finish MVP, you can, uh, you know, onboard those customers and start getting, you know, money into the bank. So, and the, again, the advantages of this process is more cash in the bank, longer runway, establish customer base once the product is live, more sales, uh, helps you to avoid team complexity. Um, get paying customers within a few months, get interactions and happy investors. And also this will help you um, if you, you know, as we talked about, if you get interaction, if you get in pre-sales, this will help you raise funding for your product uh, down the line. So if you, if you're planning to, um, to raise the money. So, and the step six, um, again, before we, you know, before we build MVP, if you, um, you know, if you don't have 
money to fund it yourself um and or you looking to reduce your own risk right and leverages le leverage investor money you can again leverage design prototype and the traction of pre-sales that you that you got and pre-sales also can be uh it doesn't have to be I, if you can get money in the bank where people swipe their credit card and say yes i want to be you know your first beta user here's you know uh here's my credit card boom you know, um, I'll, I'll be the first one to use it. That's amazing. Not all, not uh, with all projects, you can, you know, get actual uh, monetary commitment. But even if you have companies giving you, you know, verbal uh, or some sort of, you know, commitment that, you know, they're going to follow through on it, that's, you know, that's what you're looking for. So, and as the last step in the process, you, um, you know, as you raising, investment with uh vcs right the the old way of pitching something to the vcs is using a demo with poorly built application that's usually breaks right as you're doing your demo right the murphy law that it's always you know if something can go wrong it will go wrong so and uh the it's, um, old result is extra stress that might affect the pitch performance Potentially, you can create bad first impression with the investors because you're showing them something that looks terrible. It's full of bugs, and now they're like, "What is this?" Right? And it might might make it seem that your product is not well thought out. So, but if you're leveraging, you know, if you come into the investors with interactive design prototype, you already have the traction from from the market saying, "Yes, we want this." Yesterday, you know, give us this uh, application. Uh, it creates a much better first impression with investors. It, the investors also, again, they can click around design prototype uh, with the int intuitive user interface, um, adds more confidence in your approach to the business with the investors, right? Because they see you already did your homework, you know what you're doing. Uh, it, um, you can also, you know, if you get those pre-sales, you can again impress your investors increase your evaluation that's the you know the end result of this and um it also makes it easier for the investors to give money to you because they already know wh where those money will be going to which is building out the platform and scaling sales so um and it reduces less uncertainty it, it reduces uncertainty for investors and increases your chances of closing bigger uh, investment rounds much faster so that's the um that's uh the the the, the last step of the process before you uh you know how you can validate your idea before um you build an mvp and um so uh, if you're wondering how much money you can raise with the uh you know with the with this process really um you know as much money as you need uh, to reach profitability, uh, the average seed round, uh, the size of seed round is $1 million uh, based to pitch book. And um, so, uh, but really, you know, whatever um, round you need to raise, you can, uh, you know, ask for that or, you know, pitch for that round following this approach. So, and um, um, let's see uh 10 10 10 so so yeah and just to summarize the process to summarize the um the steps of this process is step one you need to do the proper customer market research conduct the interviews take a look at your competitors based on the data design an interactive ux UI prototype and then leverage this prototype to get customer feedback on the application design continue refining this design and make the edits to the prototype to make sure that you um you know get, you know polishing it up and making it in line with the client expectations next step start pre-selling or selling pre-selling getting getting customer commitment and then as a step six you can pitch the investors and you know raise one you know up to or at least or around 1.2 million in funding in nine months or less without investing in the development of the application. So that um, concludes our um, overview of our process. So 
let me uh, let me know what questions you have uh, on this slide. I included um, some uh, contact information. Uh, if you want to reach out to me and uh, set up time to connect, if you have questions about the project that you want to uh, talk about, or if you yeah if you're working on your ID and if you just even have questions, um, you know don't don't hesitate to reach out. I'd love to connect and um, um, you know help you to get unstuck or you know if you're looking for help with your project definitely would love to chat about it and see how we can help you uh, validate your product idea launch quicker so and um, i'm also posting a ton of contact on instagram so um, yeah let's let, let's connect there as well so let's see if you, yes, um, will we be able to get the slides? Yes. So what I will do after this uh, uh, webinar, I will send a follow-up email with a recording of this call and the slides so you can reference them as well. So yeah, let me know if you have any other questions in the Q&A chat. Um, and uh, I can also go over a couple of questions that I have here in my slides. So, because I know there is a lot to to cover. So, let's see. Um, in terms of the so, in terms of the so, we covered a few different phases here, right? We talked about um, doing customer research, uh, market research, design, getting customer feedback, sales, and pitching. In terms of the research, usually you want to spend about two weeks doing customer research. Two weeks doing competitor research, um, synthesizing those findings. Uh, design prototype can take uh, between one to two months, depending on how many features you have in your application and, uh, again, how complex it is. So, um, again, the rule of thumb, you want to, with MVP, focus on the most important features that you can deliver to your um, uh, to, to your customers. So that way you're not uh, spending too much time, you know, you're not going too big too fast. Like what are the top three features that will deliver the value to your customers and how can you uh, do it, deliver it as simple as possible, right? For example, we're working on a project right now and the client is looking to build this custom, custom form builder. And, you know, if the, um, one, once, you know, down the line when the project is fully developed, it would be obviously, you know, custom form builder where people can go, you know, drag and drop. There will be custom logic uh, behind the scenes and stuff like that. But for the MVP, we're just going to give customers a few forms that will be, you know, have preset number of fields, maybe preset logic, and users can just select from those maybe like three, five templates available in the system, and they won't be able to customize anything, but we just want to, like, for example, you know, validate the idea, validate the assumptions that those forms, uh, you know, gathering the data that we need together, and then later down the line, we can make them more robust and introduce logic and all that stuff. So don't go too complex too fast if you can simplify something in the beginning and, uh, you know, go, go, go that route. So with the design prototype, like I said, it can take about, you know, one to two months, um, depending on how many features you have, gathering customer feedback. Can, so we normally gather, uh, we um, break the design process into the two-week sprints. And after each sprint, we schedule uh, user interviews so that way we can validate that piece of the design that we delivered uh, quickly and then, uh, uh, you know, add that feedback um, to the prototype. So, but getting customer feedback can also take maybe, you know, a couple couple extra weeks so technically between start to finish you're looking at about you know three three months timeline to complete everything from start to finish and start getting you know sales start getting traction with your customers so um uh da, da, da. do you have a service if so what is the price of your program yeah so typically uh our price for the um so we, we do we do uh um help startups to you know take them through this process uh and it's a you know done for you solution so usually it's uh around 25 to 30,000 to complete everything start to finish so and again it can be you know if depending on the scope if it's you know 
smaller or larger projects, those numbers can vary, but on average, um, that's the you know price tag uh, you'd be looking at. So, um, all righty, let me, I'll, I'll give it two more minutes. Uh, if there are no more questions, we're gonna wrap it up. Um, again, if you have any follow-up questions, feel free to shoot me email. Uh, I'm at lena at forkota.com uh, or shoot me a message on the uh, Instagram, pick a time on my Calendly. I'd love to connect. I'd love to answer the questions. 